Let me back up and start from the very beginning. Robert Cook, who's pastor of Lone Oak Baptist Church, I was working for one of his deacons on a ranch there at Lone Oak. I didn't know Robert Cook, didn't even know what a cowboy church was. Robert Cook came out to the ranch one day talking to Nathan Barrett's name. Nathan Barrett had owned the ranch. Nathan was his deacon about starting a cowboy church. And so Nathan you know, shared that with me. I was in the shop working on the tractor that day. And they just said, yeah, that was my pastor. And he's wanting to start a cowboy church. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> well, as, as time went along, I was privy to a lot of what was going on in the background there. You know, Robert wanting to start a church. Well, Robert, uh, they said they were going to go talk to Mike Moss, who had a ranch right there at the edge of town, had an indoor arena talked to him about using his arena and so forth. Anyway, they did, and Mike agreed to it, and then, and so they started this thing on a Tuesday night. Well, Linda and I started going, because they were just having like a Tuesday night get-together and Bible study and coffee and donuts and whatnot, you know? And so then uh, this went on for, I don't know, a couple, three months maybe, and uh, they, they wanted to form a core group to start Bull Creek Cowboy Church. Mike came to me and he said, you know, he said, I think it's time for us to take some people out of our church as a core group and go start another cowboy church. And I'm like, hey, that." That sounds good to me, you know. I, that, that's the way it needs to be done, you know. And so uh, we talked to the other elders, and and uh, they said, hey, yeah, this is what we need to do. We need to present this to the church, you know. Before the service, I think Mike Moss and them told us they wanted to have a meeting, and they pick, they picked out so many of us. So we're wondering what's going to, what's really going on. So we have a meeting with Mike Moss and some of the other guys from Bull Creek. And uh, they they told us what they wanted to do. When that was established, Ricky called Gene and I and told us that they were going to be opening up a church here in the area. Bob and Linda got, uh, I guess, picked to do that and just asked us to come along and help. They come to and asked us if we would join and start going. I think we started on Tuesday nights. And I was, oh, you really want me to? And I was like, okay, I'll try it. We'll give it a whirl. They wanted to start the church here in Union Valley. So that's, that's how we got started. And then Mike asked me, he said, would you like to be the startup pastor? And I said, sure. A little bit later, I'm like, what did I just commit to, you know? <laughs> I'll be honest, when I left there, because I, I fell in love with Bull Creek Cowboy Church, Brother Mike Moss, everybody up there, Chan, Josh, everybody. And I kept telling everybody, we get this started, I'm going back to Bull Creek. You know, I thought, you know, yeah, I'll do everything I need to do to help get a church started and do what we need to do. None of us wanted to leave Bull Creek. It was a family deal, just like riding high as now. And more I stayed here, I thought, you know, this is our home, you know. But it was hard to leave. You get a good church, and I was kind of disappointed I was going to be on that team to start this church. I did, I did not want to leave Bull Creek Cowboy Church. It started right here at our arena. The kids would go off and play and the adults would church plan. Planning our startup, mm -hmm. you know, for the church. Out in the no, under the carport. First one was under the carport. First two, wasn't it? Yeah, first couple. First two were under the carport, then out to the arena. The arena. We, we'd have youth out here to Serena and it was me and Thomas. We learned as we went. And it made it, you know, made it made better men out of all of us. You've got to get the name in there. The name. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me tell you about the name Riding High. We were trying to figure out a name for the church again, Robert Cook. He called me one day. He said, hey man, I got a name for your church over there. And I said, what? And uh, he said, Riding High. And uh, he said, there's a scripture, I think it's in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. And uh, it talks about it talks about Israel, and, and it said uh, uh, God was going to make him to ride high on the on the clouds. He was going to really bless him, you know, make him ride high on the clouds. And so I introduced that to the the core group, and they're like, "Hey, man, we like that, you know." And so we we chose riding high, and then Barbara came up with the logo. The, the, the cowboy and the cowgirl there at the cross. Barbara Shortens had come up with that. After about two or three weeks of meetings or getting together and stuff and then deciding um, when they were going to do it because a lot of decisions were also made with Bull Creek and Hunt Baptist Association and the AFCC. Um, word, you know, like I said, word of mouth. People just told other people. We did put up posters around the area and then when we decided to start having services on Thursdays at the Lakeland Academy, it grew real fast. Riding around, Mike and myself, we went to driving around out in that area just looking and everything, and it just felt like that's where God was leading us, you know. So we decided on Roy City, and then we began to look for where are we going to start this, you know. We need a little arena or barn or something. And that's when we found the academy over there. And we seen that little indoor arena, we, you know, and we thought, hey, you know, let's check on this. There was a school in Union Valley. A Montessori school. That was actually owned by the same woman that owned the Montessori school that I worked at when I was in high school. And um, it's really funny to look back at God's hand in all the steps that got us to helping with riding high. Any night we wanted to be there, any day, whatever we wanted to do. And so uh, the school, Montessori School, opened up their arms to us. And so we used that arena for, gosh, maybe a year. And uh, people would bring their lawn chair. Well, y'all came over there and we had a trailer set up for the band and everything, you know. At one time, there was only a couple of people of us going to Lakeland and setting up everything. Yeah, setting up the chairs. Put putting up, up the chairs, them take them up, put them down. But it was always either real hot in that arena or real cold. But you know what? They never slowed people down and they just kept coming. Filled out a questionnaire from Bob Ferguson and he learned about my history with Montessori School and, and working with the kids through that. And I think that's when he check marked me for children's ministry. <laughs> We did go to a few church camps with Tammy and Keith Bryant at Siloam Springs, Arkansas, through another church that they were involved with at the time that they scooped up our kids. When we were in the arena at Lakeland Academy, um, we had the building, but we had nowhere to put anything. We had no chairs yet. We just had nothing. Um, when we were in the building, of course, it wasn't heated or air conditioned, so we had those kind of trials to overcome, and um, we were very blessed and grateful to be, you know, in a building, but there was nowhere to put supplies. So, my wonderful family <laughs> and my kids remember, like it was yesterday, loading up the back of the truck with all of the supplies every Sunday. You know, they would help work on the um, lessons that we were going to do and fun things and activities that we could do to add to those lessons and um, we would do programs in front of the congregation in the arena. We still have our kids country hoodies. <laughs> yeah, so they all had a green, a lime green um, t-shirt and they would wear their matching shirts and we'd get on the hay wagon and go. What around the Quinlan area mostly? And we put up flowers at, you know, we'd go to the washer chair, the grocery store, wherever they'd let us put up a flyer, you know, about 
you know, starting a new church and that we were meeting in that little arena at the, the academy, you know. One weekend there, we, we formed a trail ride. And what we did, we, we uh, made a bunch of bags, little plastic bags with a church flyer in it, a gospel track and a little New Testament. And we made a trail ride all through that area out there, all up and down in county roads and everything. And we hung those on people's mailboxes. I think everybody spread the word. I mean, everybody that would come to that church and you could hear them talk about it everywhere, they, they'd always tell everybody you could feel the Lord's presence in there. And he was there. And just so many people, they just, just talk to people. Come like you are, come in your shorts, come in your shirt, you know, short sleeve shirts. Uh, you can be filthy. You can have manure all over you. Come on anyway. We're just, we're not there for dress up. We're there to worship. I was at the Hunt County Fair one night and I talked to Terry White and Tammy White. We go way back. Asked, and you can ask Tammy White how did she find out about it and come to the church. We were actually showing pigs at the Hunt County Fair and we ran into Ricky and Thomas Brockway. And of course Terry knew them from back in the roping days and they got to talking and everything and out of the blue Ricky says, well you just need to come to church with us. We're starting a cowboy church. And Terry was like, you? He looked at both of them and they were like, yeah. And Terry said, well, we, we, might, we might try that one of these days. And uh, so finally one Saturday, I said, we're going to go try that cowboy church tomorrow? And uh, Terry said, I caught Terry on a good day, and he said, oh, all right, well, let's do that. So we loaded up, and actually they were meeting under a tree. It happened to be one of the hottest Sunday mornings. We even moved out of that arena under the uh, trees to see if it would be cooler that day. I kept thinking they'll never come back. I got them to come here and, oh man, look, there ain't a dry spot on nobody. And it was hotter than blue blazes. It was, there was no breeze. We were all sweating to death when we got back in the car. And I'm waiting when we got in the car because I just knew I was going to catch it from all three of them, you know, saying, Mom, why'd you make us do that? All three of them said, hey, this was kind of neat. And so that was the moment I knew we'd finally found a church that I felt like all of us could worship in. I talked to them. That's what she tells everybody. No matter where you spread the word, at the Hunt County Fair, in a grocery store, and we just, you know, just take a few minutes and invite people, you know. And all they can do is don't show up or say no, but you hope and pray that they show up. And, we were looking for churches when we first moved here because I went to a uh, conventional church. But when I called all the churches around here, like the Methodist or the Baptist, they didn't have a good youth program. So then Crystal and Randy were going to school with Colby, Colby Green. And he, um, he kept saying, let's go, let's go to this church. Come to my church. Well, first we went to Bull Creek, and that just didn't suit us good, but we went into riding high, and the, the minute we got out of the car, you felt the welcome because people were right there to help us, tell us which way to go, what they do with the children and everything. And then you walk through those uh, barn doors going out with that Lakeland Academy, and you just felt the warmth throughout the whole church. We didn't, they didn't have a lot of members, but it was just a very warm feeling. And we felt that way from the time we started. After being there for about a year, uh, we found that property where the church is at now. I don't know how familiar you are with, with that area, but property is, is through the roof and even finding something is, is unbelievable. We found that place there and that guy agreed to, to sell us that acreage. Uh, I think it was about half, I think the whole place was about 20 something acres. I think we got 11 acres there, I think. Jim Gatlett uh, told me, he said, man, said we got three tents 
in association and he said y'all welcome to use one of those you know over there on the property to get you know something built so we got a tent and I think we spent three years in the tent <laughs> at least three years might have been longer than that before built the building where y'all are at now the doors weren't, weren't much of a doors it was the tent then um, but it was just a warm place. It was a warm place and uh, um, felt right, felt like home. And the tent was uh, horrible looking back, it was horrible. Um, but the thing of it was is it was bad, but in, and in my heart, I just knew this is just what we had to do right now. Our chairs sinking in the mud <laughs> getting rained on whenever you're in service and you're just starting to do this and it's really nice now that you can go to a faucet and get water to make the coffee rather than to go find the hose on the other side of the property and fill up a water jug and bring it back and make coffee uh that that was that was rough was that a an experience wouldn't trade it for anything we met for over three years in that tent. People were faithful to come. Cold weather, wet weather, rainy weather, nasty weather. Sometimes it was miserable. Some of the guys built some stands to put up in the back back there and put a couple of big blow heaters to blow in there during the winter. Oh, it'd be so cold in there sometime, man. The wind would be blowing and the tent would be flapping and there'd be guys up trying to hold it together. <laughs> Having that building and not sitting out in the rain, I, I'm approving of that one. But. If there was a hole in the tent, we moved the chairs. We put hay down to soak up the, the mud. It's just something we did. I mean, it's just everybody was there for, this, for the right reason. I think that's, that's part, of, part of the success of the church was that, was that very factor. I can remember when the building, when we originally was budgeting for the building, they were worried about the cost and I was like look we have other avenues we didn't want to use people that went to church there but we had to do some things we didn't want to do and it was just in the sense that I think it was a conflict of interest if you use people that go to church there you wanted to use outside people but we ended up having to that we used Steve actually worked for the gentleman that constructed it and I found a gentleman that lived down the street here that we bought the building from, and then he donated the back porch, and just kind of come together like it was supposed to be. Yeah, the community just stepped up. It was neat to kind of see how it built and where it is now. You know, God, God's gonna take care of His church. He's gonna take care of His people. It don't make no difference who, who, who dies or who leaves or or whoever. You know, God. If this is God's place, he's going to take care of it. And so he did. And there were people in place there that were, that their walk with God was, was to the point where they could make rational Christian decisions. And God, God helped put that little group of people together who began to search for a pastor. And they went out and found Steve Bishop. I think my Bob might have gotten offered to go start up another cowboy church somewhere else down south. I can't remember exactly how that all, all played out. But uh, Bob always had a vision for 300 people to be at that church. And although he might not have got to see it through before he left, it, it eventually did happen. You had Charlie who wanted to do it. He was the band leader at that time. And then they just kind of started doing interviews and there was multiple people that when Bob stepped away that they just kind of used to keep it going through the meantime. We wanted somebody who could speak to the people and hold their attention. Uh, we interviewed we interviewed several people. Uh, some, there was two real close ones that we were really looking at. But when we talked to Steve, and he sent us some of his videos from when he was in, uh, doing his sermons in uh, Hawaii, there was just something about it. I mean, we all prayed on it, we talked about it, 
then we come we didn't want to make our decision but we come back and do that but they we wanted to make sure the their whole family like the wife and husband were were really involved in the church and that's what we got we were at church when they when they interviewed steve for the job and uh you could just tell when he got up and and did his his sermon and all that stuff that that he was going to be a winner it was christmas of 2011 we were here visiting just family for christmas and we knew we wanted to move back we you know uh with our older kids going to college here with daphne's parents health not being too great and so my brother told me there was cowboy church in union valley that was looking for a preacher so i contacted them we talked a little bit uh came to christmas day service i think Sunday fell on Christmas Day, 2011, I believe. Daphne was so friendly, you know, to everyone, and um, we were all so welcoming to them as well. But you hear the stories about the preacher's kids, and um, their kids weren't like that. I mean, they were, yeah, they weren't standoffish at all. Our kids hit it off with Chloe and um, Carly right away and riding horses together and it was like it, it's just, it's just family. Meant to be, yeah. yeah, it was family before they came and then it just grew deeper and bigger when they got there. One of my favorite things about this church that I would just love to say is that when we first came, um, it was just amazing to me how interested in each other's lives the people were. They love Jesus and they love each other. And even though we're, well, I mean, you know, we, we had, what, maybe 50 people that came when we yeah. first started. Now it's a lot different than that, but the people are still the same. They still yeah. love Jesus. They still love each other and are involved in each other's lives and outside of the church even. They love the banter between everybody, not just me and Steve, but, you know, Steve picks on people in his sermon and, and I pick on people. People like that small town rule of you're my friend, you're my buddy, you're my neighbor. And I think that's the vibe that we get off with what we do there at the church. And I think people are looking for that these days. They're looking, they're looking for that. And I think that's one of the very unique things that we bring in. And we've had it from the beginning and we've kept that. Lots of people I don't know. <laughs> There's so many new faces, but that's what you do, you, you shake their hands and you meet them, you know, and that's one thing we pushed when we were starting our church. You know, we'd have little meetings, you know, right in high, and we'd tell, you know, shake these people's hands, get to know them, make them feel welcome. I can't say enough about the church, it's been good, oh, yeah. good for us, and man, we've been blessed, and that's why we just try to give back and let someone else get blessings. Because we church. love Rodney, yeah. I can't wait church and Pastor yes. Steve, yes. definitely. It's all well, we good. love everybody there and blessed us, just the people, the people in general, just getting to know each family. I try to get to know the newcomers as well. And it's hard now that we're like booming. But Growing like crazy. Yeah. If you just sit back and look at where we've come from, you cannot say that we haven't had God's blessing. And if we continue doing things the way we are, putting God first, and making sure we're going in the direction that he wants, not the direction that we want, then I believe he's gonna keep blessing us and it, it's gonna be phenomenal. There'll never be any doubt in my mind that God didn't have a place there for Riding the High Cowboy Church. And, and I had these visions in my mind of the church building and the arena and getting us an indoor arena and all these kind of things. And, uh, and that's all came, you know, it's all came to fruit. Through, through these years, you know. You see on Facebook, people are always asking a place to go, you know, where to go to church, you know, they're new to the area, and always someone talks about going over to Ryan High. And, you know, and not every church is for everybody, but at least it gives a place for, for people who are, you know, maybe feel out of place or don't feel like they can go anywhere to church, that it's just a normal, laid back, welcoming all welcome all sinners let's do this and and go on and that's a good thing for this place for the community our goal is always to grow i think if, if you're not growing you're going backwards i mean 
you have to be growing. And so I'm tickled to death and it's all, you know, God doing that. God set this up from the start and it's up to him to keep it growing and going. So. Sing with us, you guys.